Right. Hello. This uh, this feels a little bit weird. It's the first time I've been talking to camera uh, for a few months now during the whole UK lockdown. Um, but uh, last week on Wednesday, the government and the RAA officially lifted the lockdown on sailing. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, Simon can't actually come out on the boat with me. Um, but I'm gonna go out for a sail today anyway, probably. Um, but we have anti-fouled, just to give you a pull on the outside. And um, at the back here we've got the new outboard on. We've installed a self-steering wind vane. Uh, and the dinghies on the foredeck. We've put these nice new tow rails on up at the front here. These little bits of wood just up there. And today is the day when Muffin's finally going in the water for the first time since I've owned her. And um, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm also really nervous. Uh, I've, I've launched her before, they've launched her here before and I've been on board but you know it wasn't my boat and it feels it feels weird, it feels like there's a lot of responsibility. So here we are, we are out on the water, the electric autopilot steering, we're going for our first sail and it's, I don't really know how to, how to feel because um, I've sailed, I've sailed Muffin so many times and you know done a fair bit of single handing on her, I'm, I'm really bummed that Simon can't come out for a sail today because of the lockdown laws but I was too excited not to come out by myself but it just <laughs> It feels so strange to be out on her again, but now and there's all these new systems to get used to, and it's really exciting, but also kind of nerve-wracking and tense. Right, so I've come down the Orwell now, turned the corner at Shotley Spit. Uh, I'm really enjoying listening to a bit of uh, No Such Thing as a Fish on uh, Spotify. Got my podcast on. I've got the new autopilot that we installed in there. So working away. It's really amazing how <coughs> after a year almost, well maybe slightly less than that, almost a year off the boat and after all the changes and everything we've done she basically feels the same. It's such a familiar and yet insanely special feeling to just sit down on the on the leeward seat there and look down the look down the leeward side deck and read the telltales on the jib and just watch her parting away. Okay, so here we are back in the marina bus. Uh, Simon's gonna come down tomorrow and help me with the dinghy. During quarantine, I made some floorboards for the dinghy uh, and they didn't really work when we tried them out yesterday. Uh, but I've, I've had the morning off this morning. It was a big day yesterday uh, and I just needed to digest and um, get over that. Uh, so today I've just come down later. Uh, I've fitted a new tiller extension. So this new one is actually removable so we can take it off if we want to use the tiller pilot or anything. Um, and yeah, that's what I was doing this morning at home. But right now I'm masking up the cockpit seats and I'm going to paint them with this uh, light grey Hempel uh, non-slip deck paint. I've just been using a jam jar lid here with, um, I don't know if you can see that in the sunlight, there are a couple of Barker pen markings on there just to get the curves in. I have to admit to being a bit of a, a bit of a Hempel, Hempel boy. Uh, I use Hempel, use the Hempel bilge and locker paint in the bilges uh, and I tend to go for Hempel varnish, Hempel anti-fouling, um, 
didn't use hemp anti farming this year because there was a cheap one um, and uh, I'm a cheapskate. This paint's crazy good, but uh, every now and then you have to shake it up just to mix the grit up. Okay, good morning, good morning. Uh, I've just got here. Um, still, still waiting on the gel coat repairs to go off. Um, one of the things I did during lockdown, I swapped the winch and the clutches over because previously the winch was here and the clutches were here and um, that's not a very productive setup because when you use the winch to pull the main sail up or something like that um, you then can't use it again because it's jammed off with the rope around the winch so by having it behind here we can now use it to winch up multiple halyards which is what we need but unfortunately we had all the holes from the old clutches and things which needed filling and the gel coat repair hasn't quite gone off first order of business this morning is going to be heading over to the fuel dock though not on muffin on foot because uh, my dad's boat's just been launched and we're just going to go and double check that everything's all right on that here we are on board tinfish which is my dad's boat uh, my parents boat uh, it's boat grew up sailing on um, she's a steel uh, cutter designed by Mike Pocock uh, and when my dad bought her she was just an empty hull there was nothing inside her so everything inside he built um, and uh, when I was 10 and then turning 11 uh, my parents took me out of school for the year and we sailed to Italy and back on this boat so she's uh, yeah she feels like more of a home than our house does she's definitely part of the family we see Simon cleaning the dinghy because I got it really muddy the other day. And uh, we're going to go for a cheeky sail, trying to maintain two metres of social distancing. <laughs> you know what I see in the French? No. A fuck. What? That is a baby fuck. <laughs> it's common knowledge. Uh, we're attacking up river and uh, in classic Pete and Simon style, we were leaving it slightly late to tack and um, there was obviously a bank because the depth of sound was sort of reading three to a ground um, and yeah we, we were pretty stuck but it's a good job Pete's mate um, who he sail, sails with came along and managed to give us a tow off um, after Pete had stripped down to his boxes and swam out. The guy who came to save us is, uh, is Ed who I've done all of all of the yacht racing I've ever done really I've done with Ed and he learned a lot from sailing with him so thank you Ed if you watch this and um, thanks for coming to rescue us as well mate much appreciated other than that it's a lovely evening and a beautiful day and the new keel didn't fall off when we ran aground which is quite a good test for it I suppose So we're out here on the uh, mooring that we came to last night. It is really windy. We've got absolutely soaked getting out here in the dinghy this morning. Simon's been putting away the dinghy and uh, I've been tidying up downstairs. Uh, and the idea today is to go out when it's windy and uh, give the storm jib a test, make sure all the heavy weather equipment's working, that the boat can stand up to it. So here's Nick, and he's done an absolutely banger job of steering the boat today. So you can see really clearly how he works at the moment with the rudder. His little paddle there swings from side to side, and it's pulling on these ropes, which we've got attached to the tiller. At the moment we've just put up the new storm jib, 
um, which is flapping around currently, uh, and one reef in the main. But the storm jibs being great, it's um, so much better than furling up the existing jib, um, just because it has a bit more shape to it, uh, which makes sailing upwind a lot easier. And um, yeah, just the boat is handling so much better with the storm jib on. time uh, the engine which we paid a thousand pounds for brand new like a couple of months ago and haven't really used until the boat got launched um, didn't work it just crapped out on us today and um, stopped running and uh, we had to sail back into the marina which wasn't really ideal but we managed uh, it's a nice skill to be able to say that you can do that I guess Is it recommends that you uh, flush the system out you put this in the bottom of the outboard and you can flush the cooling system out with fresh water um, to stop things corroding and stuff and uh, I was doing that and the spanner that I need to undo the nuts fell in the marina so that's just like double whammy of karma really in it adds to the windex that we've got sitting under the boat yeah. in the marina we dropped the windex when we were putting yeah. the G halyard up and we had to take the windex off and it, it went swimming didn't it Simon? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's just Birth will be birth will be a bit oh, birth is will... that is that the depth sounder saying it's a point one meter shallower. Zero zero, zero <laughs> meters there. You've got one, two, three, four in a square and this one here that's slightly off, that's the one you need to pull out. So we flushed it through with fresh water, giving it a good hose off. I'm just gonna pop it back down and see if I can get it running again before I then take it off and return it to the guys who we bought it off. My well, last uh, fishing attempt went fairly poorly. Done. Well, I caught something big, but it was unfortunately part of the boat, yeah. that being our um, anchor rope. Yeah, could be all right. Simon's caught the pontoon. We have succeeded in getting the outboard off the boat without dropping it in the marina. Four stroke engines, it's very important that you put them down the right way up so the oil doesn't run out. Just been to, um, See Mark Nunn, the people we bought the outboard off. As as ever, great service, really nice people, friendly, chatty service. Um, they've taken the outboard off us. Uh, they're going to have a look at it. Um, hopefully, it's claimed under the warranty. Okay, so uh, today, uh, I've got these here, which are our cockpit dodgers, which are finally done. So all I'm going to do now to them is pop some little brass eyelets into them so that we can tie them up and uh, we'll string them up on the boat and see how they look. What you have for eyelets is you have a tall part like that, a skinny part like that, and then you have die one or the male part, and die two or the female part. And what you do is you put you make a hole in the fabric or the cockpit dodger and you put this underneath it. There's a little um, there's a little rim in here, which you can't really see because it's focusing on my face, I'm afraid. And you put the bottom half of this in the... Oh, there we go, it's focused now. There's the rim. You put the bottom half of that in the rim and you put this assembly on a piece of spare wood. Then you put your cockpit dodger material on top of it so you poke the little protrusion here through the hole you've made in the material and then you put this has got a little groove in it there we go that's got a little groove in it and you need that facing up and you pop that over the dodger and then you put that in the top of the protrusion and bang it with a big hammer and that folds the folds the edges of the protrusion down over the top of that and it gives you a nice strong point to spread the load so when you put a piece of string through the hole in the cockpit dodger and pull <clears throat> you don't just rip through the fabric it's got a nice strong point I think I might try a drill bit Okay. 
Let's try to get up a bit. Uh, is the first one done? One, two, three, four, five, six eyelets in. Now all we've got to do is go and fit it. Check that out. So you've got the uh, first dodge on over there, muffin, and three, two, one. So we have three trolleys because we've got to get all of that from there down to Muffin who is over there. Should be on record. Yeah, I've got it. And then you just touch screen it. Good morning. Okay.